Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Ulysses Gascon and I'm going to show you today how you safely store secret. We are going to use today a uh, black box. Black box is a fantastic tool developed by uh, Stack Exchange, which is the same uh, people behind Stack Overflow and so on. Um, so basically, why we need that? We need we need a way to store secret normally, you know, every application has some secrets. If it's not the, you know, AWS key to access resources can be, you know, the database password, database username, this kind of thing. So, you know, can be just tokens that you use from a third party application. Uh, so in most, of the, in most of the cases, you don't want to have any leak around it, you know, because it's going to be dangerously and potentially any other bad actor can use your secrets and we, know, we want to avoid that at any cost, right? But sometimes when we are trying to avoid that at any cost, we end up having a lot of weird solutions, third party providers or, you know, tools that are not really aligned with the uh, what we use normally, you know, in development, like uh, source control or Git or so on, you know, so become very unnatural uh, way to use. And some of them has a lot of cost. So that's hard to deal uh, sometimes. So in this case, um, we want to use an open source tool called Blackbox, which is a fantastic tool. It's very easy, has some instructions uh, over PGP and so on. So uh, actually it's a fantastic way. It's a uh, battlefield tested. So yeah, I will say it's a very solid solution. Um, something important also is uh, when you deal with secret is the capability to share those secrets with other uh, parties, you know, like can be machines, can be your own colleagues, um, you know, and sometimes it's very hard uh, when you have the typical web interfaces. Uh, sometimes you don't have all the SDK support that you want for your tools or your colleagues don't have access and you need to be an administrator. You have a lot of problems with the roles. So in this case, we simplify that a lot. The next important thing that you want to have we, when you deal with secrets is to have a source control. The same way that you have a source control for your own code and business logic, right? When you can easily you know, just do changes, uh, create pull requests, create issues, see what's going on, check the history of the project, why something has changed in the past, want to have the same for the secret. And this is why it's so important, you know, to have a uh, source control over your secret. So it will help you a lot to keep that alive. Also having a source control that is, you know, very popular. You have tons of tools. You can use Git with almost any platform or subversion even. So then it's easy also for the machines to interact with your secrets. So that's another way you need, you know, to inject secrets on pipelines and so on. So you can avoid a lot of manual work when you have it uh, there. And the next thing is, you know, you need to rotate the secrets a lot if you want to have a safe and healthy system. And sometimes it's very hard, you know, to rotate secret because you have to let, uh, you have to inform all the stakeholders that you have rotated the secret and you have to update that in many places and ping manually sometimes a lot of people to say like look i just changed this secret please remember that next time you start the project and so on so that is not an easy way and not a very healthy way to manage that and a lot of the cases just because the user experience is so awful you end up don't do it any secret rotation so that's bad and if you have a good place where that happens easily and the people just can grab the new version of the secret without, you know, being alert manually by anyone in the team, it's going to be easier and it's going to promote good practices and you will be able to finally rotate the secrets as you need. I have installed Blackbox on my machine already, so you have to do it if you want to follow this step by step. But the basically next step, if I have the typical uh, clean and very simple uh, repository, just a creation from GitHub with the initial commit and so on. And basically what I'm going to do now is just using Blackbox Initialize to initialize the project. So it's going to prompt me like, do you want to really use that in the repo? And the question is yes. So it's going to recognize some of the things like, okay, what is my machine and so on. So next thing is I need to initialize and manually check these changes. So let me show you what has happened before. So we have four un stage changes. Um, so basically we have uh, done some changes on the Git attribute. We have some changes on the black box admins files. There are some changes already in the git ignore and so on. So it's doing some tweak uh, and some changes around a uh, PGP. So next thing is just uh, making this commit. So I will just follow the commit. And it's doing that commit for me. So we just basically granted that commit. Okay, so now that we have initialized the black box, next thing for us is going to be to see how many admins do we have. Obviously, there are no admins. 
So next step for us is going to be uh, to register or to add one admin. So basically the command is uh, blackboard add admin, but it's going to, you know, at least waiting for an email address. So I will type my email address here in a moment. That's because I already have my mm, GPG keys on my computer. That's it. Now, if we check the list of the admins, uh, you can see that I'm the only admin right now. So what happened when you add a new admin, basically you have some changes here. Uh, one is you have this popping in a uh, KPG and the black box admin TXT and so on. So you have a plain text where you can see which are the email addresses linked to the GPG keys that you have used. And then you have some additional changes. So that's keeping the internal state of the project. So we can stage both. We can stage all the files and we can say something like, uh, you know, this can be like a core uh, or well, it's going to be like a feed. Let me put that here so you can see that a little bit better. So it's going to be, um, yeah, let me show you. So you have both keys here, you have the files and I'm going to do a little commit. So it's going to be like uh, added Ulysses as admin, for example. So then when, if we come back, we do the commit. Basically we move back to the historial and we have the new admin and you see I did that commit uh, myself. So. At this moment, we already have initialized the project. I already added myself as an administrator. And what I'm going to do now is to create our first file. So good thing is you don't have to follow any format here because it's a repository control. My personal approach is to create a slash, uh, like a secret folder, like name it secret. And then I add all my secrets there. So it's easier for me and I can have an other things inside of the repositories that are not encrypted, for example, like a readme's guidelines and so on. So that becomes useful, especially if you want to include something on the readme saying like, look, this is how you manage to get access to this repo. Or this is the people to, you know, to ask, ask for permissions and so on, you know? So uh, in this case, just to show you how we are going to do it. Uh, normally the first thing is um, you create your uh, secret. So let me, use this uh, secrets folder. You don't have to follow this approach again. This is a personal uh, appealing. I like that way. So yeah, and we can create, you know, my, let's see a secret. Let's let's have it something like a token dot txt, for example. Oh yeah, we can, yeah, token dot txt, for example. And in this token txt, I will say like, uh, let's put something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever. So this is the, the token, right? That, that's my super secret token. So don't storm me, please. Uh, next thing is you need to register the new file. So basically you are going to say something like, look, I create a new file and I want to encrypt that file. So basically you need to put the reference or where is this file located? So it's going to be like in so uh, secret tokens and so on. And it's doing the encryption. So the good thing now is, uh, let me show you, we just change from that a text file to a GPG file. And if we have a look here, you see what happened. We started with a plain file. If you remember that from the encryption before, right? Then we create this encryption. So it's that the same version, but including the extension of a GPG just to make it easier. And then we already have a, some small changes. I will show you in the repository as well, how this work. And when I did this and when I finalized it to register, we can see here that something has happened. So you have a git ignore, for example, that is so cool that is storing all the time and updating all the time with the changes. So when I create a new uh, token TXT file, for example, when I recognize and I told that to Blackbox, already Blackbox prevent us to accidentally publish the unencrypted version of the file just by doing some git ignoring magic. Okay, we have some secrets already in the repo. How I see them, right? So first of all, this is using PGP uh, under the hood. So you can use PGP uh, to just open any file on this repository. So if you don't have black box support on your machine, you don't want to install any software in your machine due any technical reason, you just need to take the repository or the file that you want to encrypt and use the typical PGP commands for that. So that's so cool because you don't have any vendor locking approach, just, you know, use PGP. But if you want to use, you know, black box for that, you have a very fancy command called black box cat. So black box cat is the same as cat, but using black box, right? <laughs> so you will use uh, secrets and then go to the tokens. So you point to the file that you want to see the content, you press enter. And if you are the admin and you have the right keys, it's going to show you the content. You have it here. 
Don't worry, just because it's a one line seems a little bit weird, but it's what we have on the content. Another important thing for us is to keep the secret up to date. Do not rotate them, uh, changes whether we need to do a, any kind of change. So let's see how we do a change. So basically we can do, uh, we can use black box edit start. And then you will see that you need to point to the where, where the secret is located, as always. And then this is going to decrypt the file for you. So also that's another way to get the pure content plain. Yeah. So now let's see. I want to make uh, some uh, rotated, and I'm going to change, you know, just just to remove some part of my secret and just keep it like that, you know. So that's my changes. I use the typical editor, so you can see the TXT and so on. You can use TXT. You can use, you know, any other coding format, uh, the same as in Visual Studio Code. And when you are ready and you are happy with the changes, next step is going to do black box edit N, and then you point to the same uh, file as before and to do the changes. So next step normally for you is just to say that you have updated that secret. So let me show you what are the changes at the moment. So at the moment, the changes that we have here, like uncommitted is just you that has made, you know, the changes. So you have the different on PGP. So that's a cool thing. Like uh, you obviously in terms of the Git history and so on and pull requests and so on, you're only going to see uh, GPG. So that's important to know, but that way you don't leak your secret, obviously, on the Git history and so on, right? So next thing is I'm going to do that commit, that commit, and that's it. Basically, that's how you can edit a secret. Okay, so we have already manipulated some of the secrets in our repository, and it was easy, just a few commands, you know? Uh, next thing is how I add my colleagues to the project. So you have three, four commands that allow you to add, remove, list your uh, new admin. So you can basically add any, any colleague at any moment. The important thing is when you add a new colleague or a new PGP uh, signature to the project, you need to remember that if you want to share all the content that is already with that person, you need to re-encrypt the full project, right? So there is a command in Blackbox that allows you to re-encrypt all the secrets again. So now that we have discuss about humans and admins and edit secrets and so on and we're happy with that let's see how we can use black box with our machines right so first of all as we're using pgp if you remember under the hood we don't have to do a lot of fancy repositories it just go very simple so let me show you how that works with a sample github actions uh, that you can use i will put this github action also on the description here with the together with the source code of the project that I'm using just as an example so you can see how that works but in general lines this is going to be you know you have your own triggers like in this case for example is on every pull request so we initialize the typical checkout so we bring the source code we set up node because in this case it's a node application and here is the most important things so first of all is you will need to import your gpg key obviously right um so the idea is you have your private key so you add this machine you created a pgp key for the machine you add that machine i mean you take the private key of that machine and you put it on github you know the secrets for the action so the name of this is going to be pgp key just for you to know so basically what we're going to do is we are going to import that the pgp key to the running process to the running pipeline and basically we are going to use for example in this case a github extended token which is a separate token that uh, has uh, read access to the repository where i store my secret obviously i don't have this super secret management repository but if you have it or you have some kind of source uh, a repository where you store your secret so basically this token allows you to just clone that right in general lines and you don't uh, are able to do any modifications so you clone that repo you access to that repo, so that's the idea. And when you access to that repo, you use your PGP uh, passphrase. If you use passphrase, I highly recommend it. Aside of having a private kit, you can have also an additional uh, passphrase. And basically what you do is you use PGP to uh, open, you know, and to transform that secret. So in my case, it was uh, the cloned repository, folder secret, app, .temp, and so on. And I put that as dot m file so basically is uh, even you can rewrite the name and so on then i install the dependencies and then i build the project and in order to build the project i use the source env so basically the env that n file that i generated i inject it as a source so i have all the secrets that you have there available well you made it until the end of the video congratulations for that i have a question for you 
What do you use actually in your project to, you know, manage your secrets? Are you using a commercial solution? Do you want to try black box? Just put something on the comments. I'm going to be, I want to participate and engage with you in the comments. Thank you.